What happens when we die? I don't know. But while we're alive, loving someone means losing someone. Because sooner or later, everyone dies. I was afraid of that kind of love. I didn't want to risk real loss. Until I kissed Marcy. Now I'm thankful I have a lot to lose. When we became a family, my soul began living in other people. Aja. Ara. Marcy. How do I keep them safe and also honestly face the lessons of death with them? Death is the great teacher. And lately, it's been giving my family a lot of homework. Do not film her whenever she's crying. My pet Jellybean died, and when Aja got the news, it just crushed her. And Aja is just heartbroken. It makes me feel a lot of sadness, not due to Jellybean dying himself, which was sad, but it didn't like... But just seeing my little sister feel so much pain just really, like, shook me up as well. Dear Jellybean, <laughs> When he died, um, she just lost it with that all embodied bawling and sobbing and and it broke all of our hearts. Dear Jelly Bean, I really, really, really miss you. I just want you to know I really, 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 really love you. I hope you have a good time in bunny heaven. I really love you. <laughs> That's beautiful. I was really sad when he died since I was like playing hide and seek and I was really happy and then mom called in. Hey Aja. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, we need to talk to you. The interesting thing about Aja is how intensely she goes through her emotions. When she was mourning in sadness for Jellybean, she was inconsolable and just destroyed. But then she moves through it, really. She comes out on the other side clean. And then I cried into a pillow for about an hour. And then I went up to see him. And then I made a shrine. We went up and then she got everything from her shrine and then put it all over the bunny. And she touched his body and then she went around and got flowers from all over the flowers upstairs and she put them all over him. We're gonna bury him down our stairs so I'll be able to see him every single day. All within a few days, Jellybean died, my grandma died, and Brett Walker, a friend of ours in the Buddhist community, passed away. So I'm going to three funerals this month. Are you scared? Yes. Or is that excitement? What help have you filmed me? Ara is shaving her head because there is a girl in her school who has cancer and she lost her hair from chemo. So Ara wants to do this as an act of solidarity with that girl and help her feel better at school. Oh yeah, that's hair. That's a lot. <laughs> You're the coolest person that I know. You're the prettiest. You're the loveliest, you're the coolest, coolest, coolest! Now, right now, you look like someone from Florida. <laughs> Should we leave like a mullet? That's how oh Libra kids give her a totally mullet. Leave it as a mullet. Ara feels a lot of anxiety right now because she came out as gay to her grandma by writing her an email. I just currently wrote my grandma and I was like, hey grandma, I'm gay. She has not heard back from her grandma yet. And we're going to Minnesota in a few days to be with Grandma. It'll be the first time that Ara is face to face with her grandma since telling her that she's gay. My grandma, she is a very, uh, she's a very strong Christian. She does not support gay people, trans people. She thinks that it's a sin, but I told her that I was gay and she's not responded, but it kind of feels like 
I, I'm shaking like really intensely. If you can like see that, I'm like. You look like a Leonard Skinner fan right now. <laughs> I'm really scared. I'm really nervous. This is the first time that it's like that I've like come out. And I've like been nervous. Whoa. Tilla, no, sit, Tilla. Oh, oh, I like it. I feel bad for people that parents don't support them because this is my grandmother, and even now I'm, up, I, I'm scared. You're my hero. She's my hero too. Sorry. You're a Buddhist supermodel. I can't imagine being gay not and having parents that like don't accept you and like are like against that. Do I look pretty? You look gorgeous. Stop filming me right now. Well, this is so beautiful, Stop sweetie. You. Okay, I did. I'll shut it off. You I'm just really thankful that my parents are like that. Your hair is gorgeous. I'm still me. I'm still the little girl that she like held in her lap. I'm just more grown up and I've realized who I want to be, and I hope that she likes who I want to be, who I am, who I need to be. I'm gonna hold all the pride that those people did in Orlando, and I'm gonna spread all their love for them, and I'm gonna make the world a better place, and I make all those people proud. Everyone's kind of anxious about it, myself included, actually. I love who I am, and I hope you love me too, but I, I will always love you. The death closest to my heart was Brett's. Um, I didn't even know him that well, but it, he was one person who wasn't so precious. And he was one person who I didn't feel like I had to fall into this, I see you space that makes me want to vomit. And our friend Brett, he was gay as well. He uh, died. An overdose of heroin, I believe. Treasure the beauty that he brought and that remains and the love that remains. And maybe the breath that remains. Maybe he's here. I mean, I don't know. But I do know that I love him and I miss his physical form already. gay and he was great he was just really a great dude and this is his hat he always wore hats he was friend i am with you when you cry closer to your face than the water in your eyes cry those tears become my own Know that you are homesick, even though you're home. And he was in pain a lot, and he was sexy, and he was cool. And um, I always fall in love with the crazy wisdom teachers. Trungpa, of course, Adida, of course, um, Stuart, of course, um, Dai, of course. What's Dogen say? He says Satori is mistake after mistake. He was, he was a crazy wisdom dude. And they always ring true to me because they're on fire with life. I think his death was the saddest of all because he had a fire that the world needed. He had truth that the world needed. Brett, thank you for spreading all the smiles that you did. I'm really sorry that your life was not longer. Thank you for being the person that you were. And you don't know you're asleep. Dream. At night you dream of home. You dream that you are lost. Yeah. What 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 are you nervous about? That she's not gonna like accept me. That that she would reject you. Yeah. Yeah, that would be terrible and painful. What do you have to say about the religions that are like if you're this way, then that's not good and you should not be that way. Yeah, in a nutshell, evolve or die. Traditions, if you don't evolve and keep with the times and offer an open embrace of all different kinds of people and all different kinds of sexual preferences, you won't be here in a couple hundred years. You will be irrelevant. So how do you feel like Christianity has made it so far 
if you say that you have to evolve or die because they've like been here for like ever but like they don't evolve well it's complicated because there isn't one kind of Christianity. That's true. There's so many different strands, and there are aspects of the Christian faith that are quite progressive, that are based on the deep mystical teachings, and what I think Jesus really stood for as a figure of unbinding the heart to infinite love. So there are strands within Christianity that are quite, I think, sophisticated, and welcoming of all different kinds of people. Thank and you. Good luck. Good luck with your with your grandma. Uh, good luck with your grandma. Just thank love her. Thank you. Just love her. I, Just love her. I love her so much. That's it. She'll that that will break through. It always does. It will break through. I'm going to Iowa to my grandma's funeral. One, leaving the Zen Buddhist ceremony and heading to a Christian church. I feel myself in limbo between phases of my own life. I come from a conservative Christian family. I feel like I escaped Christianity. God is spirit. Spirit is everything, even the devil. Every time I enter a church, I'm worried they'll lock the door and trap me inside. But this is not about me. I'm trying to not be a selfish jerk and just put my attention on my mom and her loss. You're not in it, it's in you. Even the devil. God. One person should not be even more than you. Scripturally, it's how this says we should be as God's people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love him above all else. Chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Soon, each of our lives will end. Will you be ready for life's end? Do you believe he came to die for you, to pay for your sins, to rise from the grave so that you, like Marjorie, could have eternal life through him? You see, it's wonderful to see such a large family gathered together. But I know Marjorie would love to see all of you gathered, not here, but there. She, I am sure, would want to see every single one of you there. And she would tell you the way there. Believe in Jesus. You know what, Grandma? I'm sorry. I was not a good grandson. I didn't visit, didn't write, and you deserved more. Back home in Colorado, my wife is day drinking and planting flowers. Sick of all the prophets. That's her cathedral. And their parables of love. The sky, the dirt. Saying as it is below. Music, beer. So it is above. I got a message for the mortals. She's one of the deepest people I know. Hell began at birth. But she doesn't care if anyone knows it. in my hollow, like I come here and it's like dark and there's mosquitoes and it's marshy and I love it. Like I love that like deep kind of like, oh God, there's my dog again. I like that heaviness, like that suffering kind of like deep ground that death brings, the rotting, um, I've always loved that. And I don't want to die because I love life so much. And when I die, it'll be just fucking fine because it has been amazing. Don't waste time. Like, just love and just hug and just say I love you. And 
love your husband and go through your range of emotions and explore and be curious. Because you're going to die. Because we're all going to die. Memento mori. We all die. Don't forget you die. Um, we're going to die. As soon as we get to the house, before we get out of the car, me, Ara, Aja, we're all silently wondering, like, what will grandma's reaction be to Ara being gay? And I am hopeful my mom and Ara will be able to have a really blunt, honest, but loving conversation about homosexuality and Christianity. <laughs> To go home is to regress. Death is everywhere. High school, where my brain cells died from drugs and alcohol. The rinks where my lazy died and got hockey. The church where my Christianity died. The bus garage where my virginity died, right here. Thank you, Jenny. I was born right here, right here, in the, what's the name of the hospital, Mom? Mercy. Mercy Hospital. <laughs> what an ironic. <laughs> <coughs> you didn't expect my mom to be here tonight, did you? Always expect my mom. In the room where you died, Dad. I was holding your hand. And you were in another realm, looking back at this one. Your last words were, it's a strange world. And then mom asked you, what do you mean? And you said, it isn't real. After my dad died, the next night, I had a dream that he came to me in the dream. I was sitting in his chair, rocking back and forth, and he said, are you going to mow the lawn? And I looked up and I saw it was dad in the room. And as soon as I saw him in the room, I knew that it was not a dream. I, I had a lucid dream at that point. I woke up in the dream. I knew that he was dead. And I stood up and I hugged him. And the, the feeling of love that came through in that hug was totally unforgettable. And, and I begged him, please don't go, please don't go. Then I woke up and he was gone. Nothing's gonna change, I've always been water. Nothing's gonna change, I've always been water. Nothing's gonna change, I've always been water.
always been water Nothing's gonna change I've always been dry Ready or not, here I come! <laughs> bad job of hiding, Grandma. <laughs> very bad. But job. very cute job of hiding. <laughs> All right, my turn. So after a few days at Grandma's, Ara had still not had the conversation with her grandma face to face about homosexuality and religion. And she felt like she was really enjoying her time and she didn't want to ruin everything with a big confrontation. I felt like I still wanted that conversation to take place. So I sat down with my mom and we talked about it, which probably is a more appropriate container anyways. What? 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 This is hard to say, but in honesty, I do believe that homosexuality is wrong. It's not in God's will, and it's a sin. Does that mean that I don't have any sins? No. Is it any worse than any other sin? I don't know that. God is the judge. I, I don't think it's any worse than any other sin, but it is a sin. And I guess the way I look at it is that I can't love what... I can't love the sin. I can love the sinner. I'm one myself. I look at the situation and is there ever a time in the Bible when Christ, in his words, he condemns homosexuality? And then my second question would be, why can't you pick and choose? Because that's what they did. They held the Council of Nicaea and they gathered all of these Gospels that were candidates for the biblical canon and they picked some to include and they threw the other ones out and there was a huge disagreement and argument over it and there was a political system put into place to filter certain books in and filter other ones out and had different people been in that room during that session different books would have been in the Bible they picked so why don't you get to um, yeah they picked I do believe though that the God the the Bible is the inspired Word of God and what ended up in there and has lasted over centuries and centuries and centuries is what God intended for us to have and I don't think that we do have the right to pick and choose um, because I do believe it is it's truth and it's the inspired Word of God I don't know enough about the historical background to have a good discussion about that however um, one of the things for example with homosexuality I've had it's hard for me to describe, but for example, uh, Gay Pride Week always hurts me because I think even though in their opinion they're not doing anything wrong, if indeed it is a sin, for example, I, wouldn't, I would want to repent of what I thought was wrong and attempt to allow God to help me not to continue to do what I believe is wrong. So the difference there is if indeed homosexuality is a sin, then we shouldn't be bragging about it. We shouldn't be proud of what's wrong. To me, that looks like a specific worldview. It just feels to me like partial. That's mm -hmm. partial. That's one way of perceiving reality. That's one way of interpreting truth. That is one book. And I, I also just don't privilege, like if there was a scripture that told me to to disown my daughter because she was gay, and I would never do it. I'd pick my daughter over the book. I'd pick my daughter over the religion. And I think that we don't live in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. That's why I asked why if you still think people go to hell, because you do, it did. Hmm. It seemed like a bigger deal to you 10 years ago. Oh, I, I still wanna... believe it, unfortunately. I wish, I mean, I shouldn't say unfortunately, because I believe it's the truth. I think it's in the Word of God. And it, it bothers me enormously. I, I would like to not believe that. I know, but I, 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 I can't, can't help. 
If if God's going to send my daughter to hell for liking girls, no, then like no. I can't get on board. With He's that. not going to send your daughter to hell for liking girls. And I would never not love my son, even if he was gay. But could I change what I fundamentally believe is truth? No. And therefore, all I could do is, again, you you love the sinner. We're all sinners, but you don't love the sin if you believe that it's wrong. And I do. I can't change that belief. I would like to, but I can't. But people do. I mean, what do you think about people who, like, I I was a Christian at some point in my life when I when I was a kid. I went through a phase of having the same beliefs in the Bible and stuff that you're talking about right. now, and then something changed for me, and I just didn't feel that way. And, and I, you know, as I'm listening to all this and I'm thinking about change and I'm thinking of how things have changed. Um, I feel still very comforted in my faith because, for example, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus has not changed. And in my opinion, in my belief, Jesus is God. He was with the Father in the beginning before he was ever even born. He is God. He's not just the Son of God. He's the Son of God, but he is God. I do believe in it. the triune God. I don't understand it, but I believe it. It's a very mysterious container, family as a spiritual yes. crucible of times, you know? Yes. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for being such a great mom. Thank you. Thanks for being a great son. I feel like we just make up religion uh, so we're not scared of what happens after death. But. <sighs> it's a little spooky if I think of it. It hurts me that so many people have so much fear in their heart that they throw it to a story or a myth that um, doesn't make much sense and it's causing so much pain in the world and that they'd rather feel safe and calm inside than try to like look at the pain and be like, oh, this is caused by my religion and then like look into the religion and be like, oh, this is not right. This is not how it should belong. Being back in my hometown leaves me with a strange vertigo. Like parts of my world have been inverted. It takes me days to find the ground again. Start a bush on fire if it means a little proof. Don't let these phrases just float up and hit. Aja had an idea, I think it's a great one. I want to go up to the stupa like the whole family so we can honor Jelly Bean and his little happy soul that he let us enjoy for our lives. Some silence with him up at the soup, at like a ceremony. Crazy. And I think he had a very good life. I was super sad when he died. And I think he's up. on a different world. Happy, just loving, funny friends. And I don't know, I just felt like we did death well for that, for, for Jelly Bean.
Kiss me 